Hello and welcome back to Bossing Philately with Mr. F, the only place on the internet where you can learn how to get the most out of your stamp collection. Just kidding, of course, we're looking at section B, paper one. I've had a few requests to look at Ibsen Rossetti. Obviously, others out there will be using other texts, but hopefully some of the suggestions I'm going to make, which are very specific to Ibsen and Rossetti, could still be useful for you, certainly when I do a video on how to answer section B, which is going to come up very soon as well. Um, but here we are, I mean, even if you're doing different texts, the methodology here for revising Ibsen and Rossetti, you might be able to pull something out if you're not studying those texts. At least I hope you are, are able to do that. So there they are, Ibsen and Rossetti on screen. Uh, and my first pro tip would be to listen to the In Our Time podcast, uh, which is available on the BBC Sounds app. You can listen to it in a web browser. I'll put the links in the description below. Why am I telling you to do that? Well, they're both brilliant programs where you have three academics discussing the life and works of Henrik Ibsen and Christina Rossetti. So that's your AO3 cupboard because you're going to get, uh, you know, the biographical details about both of their lives. And you'll also get stuff that's very specific to poems you've studied. If it's Christina Rossetti, I think they look at uh, Remember quite closely in Goblin Market. Um, and Ibsen, you'll get A Doll's House and, you know, things relating to that that will be pertinent to you but also you'll get you know the chronology of his life and the other works uh, plays that he published uh, and remember AO3 does include uh, the other plays that we write about ghosts or Hedda Gabler you know, in relation to the question and you know coming back to uh, a doll's house maybe in a comparative sense that would get to AO3 credit as well so I would listen to both of those programs and I would make notes um, of the biographical details and the you know the textual critique I was getting. I could also do some AO5 there because I'm going to have three academics giving me some quotes and if I could make one or two short quotes that I could use uh, for either Ibsen or Rossetti, I've got a little bit of AO5 that's maybe different from the usual Quizlet AO5 that students like to regurgitate. You know who you are. Right, moving on. Uh, Right, why not make your revision a bit more fun? There's a brilliant filmed performance of A Doll's House that is available on YouTube. The link will be in the description below. So that's two hours and 70 minutes of your revision time, but what a nice way to do it. You're gonna get a you know, plot recall, so you remember what happens at the start and the end. This one's very accurate uh, to the play, although I do think it uses a different uh, translation, so just bear that in mind. But you know, essentially, it's the same text. Um, you'll spot the characterization, uh, you know, Nora, Torvald, and uh, everyone else in between. Uh, and then you'll see the symbolism being brought to life. And maybe that will help you, you know, recall, you know, the opening and closing of doors, the, the different use of space on the stage, um, you know, the letter and how it, you know, is this dreadful thing hanging over uh, Nora's head. Um, and so all of that can then can be considered as uh, AO5 interpretation. So you can um, you know, cite the uh, actor or director and year uh, and use that as an interpretation of uh, how you know, this was brought to life um, and what, it, what this interpretation added or, or took away from other interpretations or you know, highlighted about the text. So yeah, I think this is the best version because I think Juliet Stevenson is brilliant. Um, ignore the foreign language subtitles. Uh, it's obviously been ripped off a foreign language channel. Uh, I think it's Portuguese. Um, but yeah, that's a great way to revise a doll's house um, and get that plot and character and symbolic recall. Next, um, there's some great documentaries on the Pre-Raphaelites. Uh, links in the description below. Um, and that's the environment uh, that uh, Rossetti was surrounded by um, with the brother and the other artists in the school known as the Pre-Raphaelites. So that'll give you some brilliant contextual detail, AO3, of, of you know, maybe why sometimes we get those jewel-like colours in a, a birthday. Um, maybe that's, you know, we can link that to the Pre-Raphaelite painting style. Um, and we also get something about, you know, her Tractarian faith, because she is used as a model for some uh, biblical depictions in there. And, and, you know, in 
the program does focus on that at various moments. So I think that's a really useful contextual source. Um, and, you know, it's not long and you can just kind of dip in and out of that. Again, another fun way to uh, review a Goblin Market, which is a very long poem, is this uh, dramatic interpretation that was on the BBC. It's fairly recent as well. So useful for AO5 interpretation. You know, we might struggle with that. We might rely on critics, but not think about the way that Goblin Market has had other lives um, since then. I mean, there's a famous Playboy one, which is a bit um, saucy, shall we say. Um, and yeah, it will help you recall the poem and key moments of the poem. So I think that's a useful thing to do as well. Do timed practice questions and then read candidate style answers on the OCR website. Well, I'm going to do one of those in the um, next video I'm about to record. But there's no reason why you can't have a look at the 2017, 2018 and 2019, well, actually 2018 and 2019 exams uh, and have a go at which question you'd answer. Uh, and then check the candidate style answers. Just be mindful that there aren't always candidate style answers for every uh, question, because there are six questions, aren't there, in section B. And also, they won't be candidate style answers for each pairing of text. So you'll often find Ibsen and Rossetti there, but not always. Sometimes it's Ibs Ibsen and Chaucer or some of the other texts there. So just bear that in mind. You might be worth checking the candidate examplars for what's there before having a go at the question and then checking back at the answer and how they answered it in comparison to you. Um, right, and then finally, do some old school research and note taking. There are very good Wikipedia pages on all these uh, writers and texts. So A Doll's House has a page, Ibsen has a page, Rossetti has a page. And if you're struggling with AO3, uh, or AO5 kind of interpretations, like the, maybe the feminist readings of Rossetti or the, you know, the, uh, the historical background to a doll's house, that would be a really useful way to uh, get some notes and uh, do some extra revision there. Uh, right, that's all I've got to say on that. Look at these two happy people. They've obviously followed the pro tips to help revise Ibsen and Rossetti. Um, you know what to do. Likey like, subby sub, and I will be back with another paper one section video looking in detail at how to answer that tricky question very soon. Bye for now.